That was, I think, the lone shred of good news from this earnings report because the downturn in the semiconductor market is getting ugly and the next quarter probably going to be a bit worse before things overall start to return to sequential growth. So it sounds like this company is going to be raising some debts. How will this affect the financials next? Yeah, and a significant amount of debt. Right, Casey, there's a possibility that they could have as much debt as they have cash on hand. So the balance sheet will suddenly not be nearly as healthy as it was. After NVIDIA's earnings report last week, we've been thinking about two other stocks that we might choose over NVIDIA to purchase right now. Those two stocks are Allegro Microsystems and Marvell Technology, which also reported recently. So today we're going to discuss both of those earnings reports and whether or not these two stocks are candidates to add to your portfolio right now. Let's start with Marvell Technology. Marvell reported a revenue of $1.34 billion in the second quarter of fiscal 2024, which was a 12% year-over-year decline and a 1.5% quarter-over-quarter increase. You can see that most of this decline was driven by the data center year-over-year decrease of 29%, as well as their enterprise and mobile carriers also bringing down that revenue stream. Consumer markets up 2%, automotive and industrial up 32%. So Gap net loss was $208 million in the first quarter or $290 million in net income on an adjusted basis. We'll talk about the difference between those two things momentarily. So Casey, a few months ago when we reviewed Marvell's first quarter earnings, uh, which were after NVIDIA's last blockbuster Q1 Earnings were they forecasted that massive sequential increase in revenue, and which, of course, everyone knows now, they actually beat those already really, really crazy uh, numbers that they had provided for investors to expect. We had said a few months ago that we thought there was going to be some lag time for Marvell to catch up with this AI boom, and it looks like that is absolutely happening in the market. Somehow was surprised by this that Marvell didn't have a more dramatic quarter over quarter increase. As you said, just one and a half percent quarter over quarter. The company has swung here to flat free cash flow from pretty good free cash flow the previous quarter. Uh, they had reported 105 million in free cash flow in Q1. Uh, that's dropped to basically nil, just a scotch over 1 million in free cash flow in Q2. So uh, the stock. Coming back down to what we think is a bit more reasonable levels here. So maybe we should delve into some of those specific operating segments that you mentioned here and explain the very confusing dynamic going on for Marvell right at the moment. For Marvell Technology, data infrastructure revenue represents 87% of their total revenue. Data infrastructure consists of revenue from their data center, carrier infrastructure, enterprise networking, and auto and industrial end markets. You can think of this data infrastructure as the chips and interconnects that make up the data system highway. So I'll just run through these really quick, Casey. The data center segment consists of both public cloud data centers. So that's a data center that a company or we as individuals would access via a public internet connection, or it could be an on-premises private data center that a company connects with its own private network, non-public internet. And then enterprise is all computing hardware that's non-data center. Uh, so think of this as like maybe computing hardware that gets stuffed into an office building. Let's, let's call it that. You can see here the big year-over-year -year decrease, especially in data center. This includes the AI segment, which we'll talk about in review here again in just a moment. So we have this shifting dynamic where a lot of enterprises are taking their capital expenditures, suspending on property and equipment, including computing equipment, that they were going to spend on, let's just say, plain vanilla old cloud and now shifting that to this new AI spend. And when we say AI spend, what we mean specifically is the generative AI, all these new 
AI use cases that NVIDIA has helped pioneer with their latest and greatest GPUs. So you have this shift here and maybe a bit of a pause as that CapEx kind of switches gears. And it looks like a lot of companies purchasing those NVIDIA GPUs. And there's a bit of a lag now as they wait for Marvell to ramp up some of the interconnect equipment that helps them stitch all of those different GPU clusters together within a data center. Again, like Casey said, think of this as like the information highway that connects these different computing machines together. That's where Marvell comes into the equation here. So they did say the AI revenue is quickly increasing. So as they exit fiscal 2024, CEO Matt Murphy said that they are looking at 200 million in quarterly revenue or 800 million on an annualized basis by Q4, uh, which will end in January, 2024. All above what they had outlined last quarter, essentially this run rate is what they had communicated they would pull in in the form of revenue next year, fiscal 2025, calendar year 2024. So that's positive. But again, because of this pause in data center and also enterprise non-data center, it looks like the AI growth is being offset by a decrease through everywhere else, at least as far as it looks right now. It does look like that data center segment you can see in the third quarter expected to notch a pretty healthy sequential increase, mid-teens percentage, but again, offset by enterprise. Uh, and then I'll just also point out here real quickly, mobile carriers, think of this as internet service providers and mobile service providers. 5G network rollout continues at a pretty healthy pace. So it looks like that is going to return to growth next quarter as well. That's good news. And then automotive, the star of the show at the moment, looks like a big year over year increase again next quarter as some of the same information interconnect uh, system needed in the modern car to help enable these modern vehicles, which are essentially data centers on wheels. What are some of the new products that Marvell Technology released that will help drive this growth for data center infrastructure? Yeah, they had a number of new product announcements. We'll just take you through the slides here from their last earnings presentation. First, you can see this 800 gigabits per second pluggable modules for optical network interconnects, again, primarily within data centers. And then related to that, you see these 800 gig optical modules uh, for data center interconnects. I think these are basically the plugs that go into the actual servers, the computers within data centers, as well as the switches. I think of those as like the highway and freeway interchanges within a data center. And then they also announced the first ever five nanometer that's relating to the semiconductor manufacturing node. This is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing that provides these for Marvell. Five nanometer multi-gigabit PHY or physical layer platform. So these are ethernet cables. Again, stuff that plugs into the different components of a data center, into the different servers, into the switches to help increase the speed limit of that information highway and also widen the lane so that more information can travel between these GPU clusters that all of these customers are buying up from NVIDIA. Uh, and then one more, uh, again, just more Ethernet stuff here, but this time for vehicles. And Marvell says this is now the automotive industry's fastest Ethernet switching platform. Uh, so this business that Marvell started is called Bright Lane. And so they continue to release new products to help address automotive manufacturers' needs for more data transfer between all of those sensors uh, that are maybe collecting video, collecting radar and LIDAR to help with advanced driver assist systems. So maybe if you have, for example, a cruise control system that helps maintain a safe distance with the car in front of you, a, a lot of data being collected by a vehicle from those sensors, and it needs to be processed by the central computer and then delivered to you on the infotainment display. And Marvell provides a platform to help all of that data get moved from the sensor to the computer to you, the driver. I'll go back to those net income numbers from previous, Nick. As I said, net loss was $208 million in Q2, but $290 million on an adjusted basis. Why the big discrepancy between those two numbers? 
Yeah, Casey. So on an adjusted basis, the company is generating net income and the difference is primarily depreciation and amortization. So depreciation, 75.5 million, that's non-cash. That's when you buy equipment and that gets subtracted from free cash flow at the time that that purchase is made. But then when reporting that income, the expense is split up into bits. Every year you depreciate that purchase of equipment. And then amortization is related to the acquisition of intangible assets. So you may recall, if you've been following Marvell for the last few years, they made a string of acquisitions specifically aimed at more data and interconnects, especially ethernet and optical interconnects. They bought a company called Innovium and another one called Infi a couple of years ago. So the amortization, again, that expense made at the time of the acquisition a couple of years ago, but the expense is realized each year over time. That was 272 million this quarter. And then one more line item, stock-based compensation for employees, 153 million. You subtract those three things. That's where you get the difference between the gap net loss of 208 million and the adjusted non-gap net income of 290 million. So a couple of years ago, it said that these two metrics would slowly converge over time. Of course, the downturn in the semiconductor industry, as we mentioned, primarily from non-generative AI data centers, complicating things a bit here, slowing down the company's progress in converging gap profits with adjusted profitability. But nevertheless, that's the difference between the two. Uh, the two should still continue to converge over time as they work off some of that primarily depreciation and amortization expense. It does sound like the interconnects being developed for AI are ramping up very quickly. Surely this is a reason to buy Marvell technology stock. That was, I think, the lone shred of good news from this earnings report because the downturn in the semiconductor market is getting ugly for Marvell. And the next quarter, probably going to be a bit worse before things overall start to return to sequential growth. AI is a reason for optimism for Marvell. Starting in calendar year 2024, it looks like the company should be back in all out growth mode. Some of the non AI inventory corrections should be mostly complete by then. Of course, as you mentioned, the AI specific data center business ramping up quickly, 800 million annualized run rate by the end of this year. That's a significant chunk of revenue that didn't even exist a couple of quarters ago. Suddenly it does. A 5G mobile networks continuing to roll out at the next phase of those global wireless internet uh, infrastructure rollouts should continue next year after a bit of a pause this year. So a lot of things to be optimistic about, but uh, Marvell really needs to start clawing its way back to gap profitability. So Casey, I think at this point, it's difficult to stick a fair value on this business because there's a lot of unknowns as far as what the cadence of profitability will be headed into the next year. This one is for us, I think a hold again, or possibly if that stock price continues to dip closer to 50 bucks a share, or maybe even dips under 50 bucks a share, we might fire up a dollar cost average plan again on this and start adding to our position. So I guess to answer your question, this one is on our watch list. Again, we have put a, a, a hurt hold on it last quarter. And I think now let's say it's back on our closer watch list. We do see Broadcom as the better buy right now. Ticker symbol AVGO. Those earnings are on Thursday this week, so we'll make sure we have an updated video out to you later this week on Broadcom. If you don't know, we call Marvell Technology Group Baby Broadcom. <laughs> the companies compete or have a fair amount of adjacent uh, chip types. Uh, they complement each other in some ways, uh, compete in others. So we'll have more updates here later this week on why we think Baby Broadcom is on watch, but Broadcom maybe the better buy at the moment. Before we move on to our next stock, I just want to remind you to hit the subscribe button for us. If you're enjoying our channel and share our channel with your fellow investors, 
Our goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So you can definitely help us out by subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. For our next stock, we have Allegro Microsystems. Allegro Microsystems is a fabulous chip designer, highly focused on the automotive industry. They mostly design analog circuits that are in the powertrain of an electric vehicle and for basically anything that has a motor in the industrial setting, as well as some consumer electronics. You can think of that as maybe like the haptic feedback in your gaming console remote. It's really cool tech. Q1 fiscal year 2024, which is the three months ending in June for Allegro Microsystems, revenue was up nearly 28% year over year to $278 million. Earnings per share went from $0.05 cents last year to $0.31 cents this last quarter. Uh, Casey, I want to make a plug for the first and only video up to this point we had on Allegro Microsystems early this year. At the time, uh, they had just had their first ever investor day because this was an IPO a, a couple of years ago. Not a new company, but a fresh IPO. We provided some detail on the company's corporate structure, the fact that Sunken Electric in Japan is the biggest shareholder, uh, and they also have a chip manufacturing arrangement with Polar Semiconductor, which is another Sunken Electric portfolio company. Kind of a weird relationship there. Check out the last video. We said that we saw the stock price was probably due to fall back down to 40 or below. It did. It rallied again after this earnings report. It's back under 40 bucks again. We haven't provided any update since then. And if you never see an update from us on something, that's probably because we haven't actually updated our view on the stock and we have seen no reason to do so. But the reason why we're now doing this video five, six months later is because we've now updated our view on the stock and we see the need for some more information to be provided on what our outlook is for the company. As we said, revenue was up 28% year over year in this quarter, but the guidance for next quarter puts it at only a 16% year over year increase, which is a significant drop in growth. Why is this company pulling back on some of that growth in the next quarter? Yeah, I think this is why the stock fell again below that $40 per share range. I think many investors were taken aback by that deceleration because Allegro had said during that investor day that they kind of 30% growth as their benchmark, 28% growth this quarter, just barely falls short of that. No big deal. But 16% definitely falls below that stated baseline that they'd like to see their revenue growth at. And it would seem that this is a reasonable benchmark for Allegro to have, because as you said, this, this company does power chips. A lot of their power chips are not silicon carbide or gallium nitride chips, but they're, they're complementary to silicon carbide chips and help enable the use of silicon carbide in an electric vehicle. And then they're also the number one chip designer in magnetic sensors. We'll talk about what that is here in just a moment. But again, like you said, Casey, think of these as an integral part of an electric motor. So any system, it could be an electric vehicle. It could be a piece of industrial equipment, like maybe a manufacturing arm, like a robotic manufacturing arm. There's a motor drive in there and it's probably not going to be powered by fossil fuels. There's probably going to be an electric current coming from elsewhere in a factory that powers that thing. So you've got an electric motor. These magnetic sensors integral to all of this stuff. What's happening at the moment is we're having, again, a bit of a pause, still growth, but a bit of a pause in growth from some customers that are trying to manage inventory, manage their cash this year, because there's been such overwhelming worry this year about a global economic slowdown at best. Um, of course, the use of the R word recession has slowed down as of late, but earlier this year, that was like on the tip of everyone's tongue constantly whenever talking about investing in the economy. Is there going to be a recession again this year because of the Fed's interest rate hikes? All of that is working through the system right now. Allegro overall still sees returning to more robust growth later this fiscal year 2024, which will end in April of calendar year 2024. It's confusing, I know. 
But uh, that's what's going on at the moment. Still a growth company. And Casey, as you pointed out, a company quickly scaling to a very robust profitability. So I think maybe let's shift focus from the revenue growth story and think more about this company as scaling to robust profitability. That I think is going to be the key driver of the business here going forward. Because even after the big sell-off in the stock, it's still premium priced about 30 times trailing 12-month earnings. Related to the earnings release, about a week after that, Allegro Microsystems announced that they were acquiring Crocus Technology. So what makes this company an interesting addition to Allegro Microsystems and what does Crocus Technology produce? This is a cool business that they have acquired. Crocus designs what are called TMR sensors or tunnel magneto resistance. Okay, Casey, let's talk about a little bit of physics here just for a moment. So I said that Allegro Microsystems is the number one designer of magnetic sensor chips. These are called Hall effect sensors. These take advantage of the Hall effect, which was observed all the way back in the late 1800s. These sensors are well-established. Uh, automakers and industrial uh, equipment makers rely on these all the time because of the fact they're very cost-effective and they're reliable. Crocus is a startup that designs TMR effect sensors. So TMR stands for Tunnel Magneto Resistance Effect, TMR effect. This is not a magnetic field observation that was made until 1995. So over a hundred years later, after the Hall effect was first observed, I don't want to delve too much into the physics here because uh, that is better handled by a different YouTube channel that delves into just that kind of stuff. But think of this as the Hall effect sensor as the tried and true chip technology. It's affordable. TMR effect sensors are even more accurate unlock a lot of new use cases for magnetic sensors within an electric motor and other related systems in an electric vehicle and other industrial applications. But they're not tried and true technology. They're not as cost effective. But the expectation is over the course of the next decade, the two types of chip technology will become closer to par. So hull sensors will remain the dominant chip type in magnetic sensing, but by acquiring Crocus technology, Allegro gets a company with a bunch of patents, a lot of IP on these TMR effect sensors, which are expected to be a high growth portion of the magnetic sensing part of the market. They'll pick up a lot of market share in the next decade. At least that's the expectation. And by getting Crocus Allegro is able to augment its own research into TMR effect sensors, and they think we'll be able to take what Crocus does now, plug it into their existing supply chain, plug it into their existing sales and marketing efforts, and get really fantastic growth out of this business in the coming years. This all sounds like really cool, cutting-edge tech, but there is a problem with Allegro acquiring Crocus technology. At least according to us, Allegro is going to be paying $420 million in cash for Crocus. And Allegro only had $353 million in cash on hand at the end of June with a $25 million debt balance. So it sounds like this company is going to be raising some debt to purchase Crocus. How will this affect the financials, Nick? Yeah, and a significant amount of debt. Hey, Casey, there's a possibility that they could have as much debt as they have cash on hand. So the balance sheet will suddenly not be nearly as healthy as it was. And of course, interest rates are much higher now than they were a year ago. So when Allegro takes out that debt, we're looking at an interest rate that's probably going to be north of 5%. At least that's my best guess right now. Let's see what the, uh, the financing terms end up being once they raise that debt to acquire Crocus within the next quarter or two, the acquisition should be complete. So that's the concern when you're talking about a company that is rapidly scaling towards 
robust profitability, suddenly we're going to now have to account for interest payments that are going to get deducted off of the net income. The other point that we should make with this is management said that they expect Crocus to produce sales in the low double digit millions in 2023. So they're paying 420 million for this company and only getting a return of, let's say, 20 million. Is it worth the acquisition? Yeah, it's a very high price tag, Casey. And I think one of the reasons why Crocus, this is a startup, it has venture capital backers. So those VC backers probably wanted a hefty price tag to cash out. That's probably why it was so high. Yeah, this is a highly complimentary business to what Allegro already does. They think they'll be able to scale those sales rapidly, but there's always risk with that. And of course, overpaying, but let's say 20 times expected calendar year 2023 sales. Crocus is not a profitable company. So we've got a year or two before we see positive effect on net income and earnings per share for Allegro. That's you know, taking out a lot of new debt uh, for something with this type of growth profile is, is risky. And like you said, the really interesting tech that they're getting here, uh, but from a financial perspective, let's say this is going to be a headwind. Let's call it a headwind for Allegro for the time being uh, because of the, uh, the interest payments that are going to need to be paid because of it. As you mentioned, Nick, in April of this year, we had our first video on Allegro and the stock at that time was trading for 60 times trailing 12 month earnings and 70 times trailing 12 month free cash flow. It was around $46 per share and our price target was less than $40. It's currently down 25% from its recent all time highs. Is Allegro Microsystems stock a buy? We think this stock is now at the high end of fair value. So that being said, uh, this is one that we are adding to our watch list as well. But if we decide to start buying it, it is going to be a dollar cost average candidate. I think it is going to be a very volatile stock. And given the slowdown in revenue right now, plus this large acquisition and the debt that will need to be taken out to make it, we see some downside for Allegro Microsystems so if we're looking for a fair value range, the high $30 per share range is the high end. And then all the way down to, let's say, 30 bucks per share, we could see this thing falling pretty easily another 10 to 20% from where it's at right now. So if we decide to fire up a dollar cost average plan on this, we expect to see some volatility and would be interested in having that DCA plan in place to pick up shares in the low 30 range especially if the company is able to reaccelerate its growth again, headed into calendar year 2024. Um, if we see those growth expectations tick back up closer to their 30% revenue growth target, this could be a great stock to own for calendar year 2024. We talked about two companies today that could be a better buy than NVIDIA, Allegro Microsystems and Marvell Technology. Of the three, NVIDIA included, if you were going to fire up a DCA plan right now, which order would you say would be the best for us, Nick? So for us, we already have a full position in NVIDIA. We were buying last year when both of these stocks, Marvell and Allegro, were in much better shape, financially speaking. We're not adding to our NVIDIA position. It's at the bottom of this list right now if we were going to do a dollar cost average plan right now. So that leaves Allegro and Marvell. Both of these we see as having maybe a bit of downward pressure uh, here in the coming months as we gear up for next earning season. So I think we like Allegro because it's a profitable company and they're scaling profitability. So the next quarter, they could be in for some nice upside if they deliver on that front. So I would say for us, Allegro first. Marvell second, again, because they are only profitable on an adjusted basis, and we still need to see their data center segment return to more robust growth, supported not just by the new new generative AI chips, but also from some of their older cloud computing chips as well as their customers work off some older inventory and rebalance their capital expenditures 
to support new data center designs and architectures to support things like chat GPT. So I think that's our order right now out of these three, Allegro, Marvell, NVIDIA. Fair enough. But we do have one other company that we really like coming up with earnings later this week, Broadcom, ticker symbol A-V-G-O. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that video. We will have that to you after their earnings later this week. Also, we got a lot of great feedback on our videos related to cybersecurity and one company in particular, CrowdStrike, we have owned since its IPO. And so we're going to give you some of our research and ideas on this company and their growth potential in the coming years. And uh, Casey, one thing that we have not talked about with CrowdStrike is how it pertains to the semiconductor world. So I'm excited to key everyone in on how there is some connection here with CrowdStrike, a totally cloud native cybersecurity software business, and how they use chips in their business and how some of the recent AI hype could eventually trickle down into CrowdStrike's business later on. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Chip Stock Investor. Again, we really, really appreciate the support. We are coming up on our one year anniversary for this channel. So we are thinking about some special content related to our performance in our first year making videos like this for you, especially the chip stock portion of our portfolio. So stay tuned for that. We think some exciting stuff going on here and we'll give you some insights that we're seeing into this new bull market that we thought all along the semiconductor industry would lay the foundation for. And I think now NVIDIA has proven is absolutely indeed what's going on here. Semiconductors, the foundation for the next bull market. And we'll cue you into some reasons why we think that is and how that is playing out. Stay tuned for that, everyone. Until next time, later this week, take care.